Well, this week in indoor football as the Albany Jacksonville game is coming to a close. It's probably gonna conclude by the time we finish this video and get it uploaded. Oh boy! I, I thought this week was gonna be light, you know, once again, I thought this was gonna be another light week of really nothing going on, but you have Sioux City losing their first game of the season. You have Frisco and Arizona in one of the best games of the season, and Frisco did in fact beat Arizona, which I did not expect at all. I, I'll be I'll be completely honest. Arizona has lost the second game this year. Again, remember I picked Arizona to win the uh, the IFL championship this year. Um, I don't I don't know if that's going to be the case. You know this year because I mean we could see Frisco and Arizona one more time in the national championship god I still hate that it's called the national championship that's neither here nor there the reason why we have to push this back to Sunday is because of something that we'll talk about which is the Albany Jacksonville game weather delays unfortunately caused a lot of Jacksonville players not all of them but some of them to miss out on flights so some of the players were able to get to Albany in time others were not and that's why this game was moved to Sunday. And and if you watched this game, unfortunately for you, if you're a Jacksonville Sharks fan, uh, it did not go well. It, it has not gone well. The NAL so far has really been, you know, Carolina and Albany so far. You know, Columbus and, you know, kind of sprinkling themselves in there as that third place type team. But everybody else, Orlando's not that good. Jacksonville is a shell of its former self. And San Antonio is bad. And speaking of San Antonio, you know, we have the John Wayne Service Company, a HVAC company. They are the guys. They are the, the company that owns the San Antonio Gunslingers now, which is never a good ice that's never a good sign in the arena game that's never a good sign you know having new owners not even not, we're not even a third of the way into the season by the way in the NAL we're not even a third of the way into the season this was confirmed through um, the homies over at the smoking guns podcast who again I believe I believe one of their guys are in a discord with me um so you know this is interesting because San Antonio has to really, really market, has to really, really get things out in order to stay alive. Because I personally do not think the San Antonio, San Antonio guns like us will last. I've, heard, I've, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. They need, to, they really need to prove it. And you know, not winning is not going to help. But trying to get, you know, uh, again, creative ideas like free tickets, like that uh, a couple weeks ago. That was an idea, and it kind of worked out because it was what, like, what, 1,800 people there at that game? You know, at San Antonio, it was like, what, their second home game of the season? So, you know, things like that are going to have to help, you know, San Antonio out a little bit, I think. Um, IFL, really, no, nothing too particularly crazy. San Diego has a new head coach, Taylor Jed User, you know, I hope I said his name correctly because I probably did not, but San Antonio has a new head coach, or not San Antonio, San Diego has a new head coach. That is also not a good sign because San Diego's not very good, and they, uh, it, it's just been a struggle for San, San Diego so far this year. I, I almost said San Antonio again. But it's, been, it's just been a struggle for San Diego the past, honestly, their entire existence, you know, but this year especially has been real rough for them. And, it's just kind of unfortunate, you know, that you know another head coaching change in the middle of the season. It just it just doesn't happen every day. So anyway, after all that, let's get to the let's get to the FCF because there is a little bit of you know news coming from the FCF, and that is Michael Bick. Was he going to join the FCF? There was an article earlier in the week that said, "Hey, Michael Vick is joining," but then Vick shot down the rumor. Um, earlier um, this weekend, he shot down that rumor and said, he, I'm done, I'm retired, so there's no reason for me to even be playing. Which is also a good side. I believe there's another new owner as well in the FCF. I'm not sure. Cause I know we talked about Marcus Peters, but I forgot who else is a new owner because I know there's another, there's another guy that 
you know, another NFL guy that's a new owner of one of the FCFT, which is, again, like, I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why people are investing in the FCF. We know, we know crypto and NFTs are, you know, now they're no longer, you know, the thing. They're, they're, they're no longer that niche thing that, you know, people can take advantage of. It's worthless now. Uh, so there's that. And then, you know, the lower level leagues, we got to get to those. Magnolia State, they played Georgia Lita this weekend. North Texas, they, the North Texas Bulls, they played the West Texas Warbirds. The West Texas Buccaneers, they did not travel to Wichita. And, you know, West Texas has been a team that's been very inconsistent. Do they even exist? Do they not? Who knows? Uh, they did not travel to Wichita. They were supposed to, but they did not travel to Wichita. And I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, you cannot count on a team that's just that was almost ready to go back into the AAL at one point. You know, before the AAL, you know, decided to go on hiatus. You 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 can't trust a team that's conned their way into you know, oh, into everything. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't understand. You know, the West Texas Buccaneers and their mindset. And the owners of that team, um, the Alabama. Let's, let's go back and we'll talk about the Alabama Empire in a minute. But North Texas. Uh, speaking of North Texas, the Bulls. They'll be playing Mississippi Raiders on June the fourth. I don't know if Mississippi's even gonna have, you know, turf for that game. Remember, Greg Fernario is taking back his turf, you know, from Mississippi, or at least he, or at least I hope he is. And we don't know what in the world happened to the St. Charles Bandits. They have not said anything since the month of April. And they're just like nowhere to be found. I don't think they played a game yet. Um, which is really sad to see. Um, oh yeah, the Charlotte Thunder. They've changed their schedule again for like the fourth time in the past three weeks. Like... They were supposed to play Carolina twice, the Carolina Predators twice in June, but now they've changed that to have a game against the Carolina Predators and the Georgia Lena Lions uh, in a six-day stretch, which we, one game is going to be June 12th, and the other will be June 17th. So, Carolina, it, it, uh, you know, the Carolina Predators, they, they haven't, I don't think they've played a game in quite some time either. Georgia Lena's played you know, some games and stuff like that, but Charlotte, you know, right now they're on a rest. I'm not sure about the whole, not sure what West Michigan's doing right now, because I don't think they played in a hot minute either. I know they're supposed to play again soon, but I'm not sure who against, and I might have forgotten already who they were supposed to play against. Oh yeah, if you happened to go to Danville last night for that IFA championship between Chicago and at Central Illinois, uh, it was rough because the field looked terrible, and it just is what it is there. But um, who cares? It's another champion technically crowned. I forgot who won the game. I don't care who won the game because um, those teams, those two teams, have really just whittled. They're really the bottom of the barrel because they're left. They're the only two teams left in the IFA. So it is what it is. But the big news that has come out in the past hour, honestly the past six or seven hours, is the Alabama Empire getting kicked out of the EAIF. Um, they beat the Southern Steam last night, and yet the EAIF said that Alabama's failed to follow league requirements and away venue rules and guidelines, and, it, and the drama is getting real spicy over on Facebook right now. Check the Elite Indoor Football's post about the Alabama Empire getting kicked out. You'll see that Alabama's owner is really upset, and they're going. They and the Southern Steam owner, you know, um, I forgot who, who I forgot his actual name, but you know, you know the Southern Steam guys own the EIF, but uh, they're going on a back and forth tirade right now, and it's just it's it's just not going well for either side so you know hopefully that gets resolved if not we'll talk about it next weekend and in any case I will see you all on Memorial Day uh, when it comes to you know another week of indoor football another this week of indoor football edition and 
Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Check out the USFL recap, which just got posted about an hour or so ago. You know, honestly, I think it was like 30 minutes ago, I think. But I will see you all on Friday for the USFL preview because, we again, we got a long weekend coming. And these will be the last stretch of videos for the month of May before we move on to the month of June. And cannot wait to see you all on Friday. Take care. Have a good week. I hope I have a good week as well because I'm trying to I'm trying my best to get back to work and you know enjoy all that is happening this week because we got a we got, we got a long week, man. We got a long week ahead. And yeah, that's it. I'll see y'all soon.